Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to SQL Server performance monitoring and tuning video brought to you by SQLworkshops.com. In this video, we will take a look at page latch weights related to update. In SQL Server, concurrent writes or read write access to the same page can lead to page latch weights. These are page latch weights and not page I.O. latch weights, meaning these are purely memory access contention and not I.O. related contention. In TempDB, this can be related to allocation contention or metadata contention. I discussed about them in previous videos. This can also be related to inserts. I will cover inserts in a future video. In this video, we will talk about page latch weights related to update. Let's look at an example. To follow this example along with me, you need the SQL test tool. To get the SQL test tool, you can go to sqltest.org and click on download. There you will find a link to install SQL test. Once you have SQL test tool, you can click on file, open online examples. There you will find the example SQL test underscore page latch weights update. Click OK to open this example. In this example, we are creating a table called tab 72. This table has three columns, C1 integer primary key cluster, C2 integer, and C3 is character 20. The rows are small, narrow, which means many rows can fit in the same page. We are inserting 2000 rows into this table. Column value for C1 and C2 will be between 1 and 2000. Let's press OK. To create this table, you can click on Workload for tab and click on Start Current. The table has been created. Now let's click on Settings and Comments. Let's copy these statements into one of our Management Studio windows. Now let's go to Workload 1. In Workload 1, we are executing an update statement over that table tab 72. We are setting C2 equal to C2 plus 1, where C1 equal to this placeholder called SQL test underscore thread. What this will do is this workload is configured for four threads. So four threads will run this workload. The first thread will substitute one in place of SQL test underscore thread. The second thread will substitute two and so on. If you want to know more about these placeholders, you can press F1 while you are in the SQL command rich text box. There you will see information about various placeholders. SQL test underscore thread substitutes thread number. Let's start this workload. This workload does the update in a loop for 1000 times with four threads for 120 seconds. Let's start this workload by clicking on workload one tab and clicking on start current workload. You see the average response time is about 99 milliseconds. To see the time in milliseconds, you can click on tools and you can click on average DB time in milliseconds. Let's go to the Management Studio window. Here we will execute the SPU Pro Store procedure to look for wait type, wait time, and wait resource. If you don't have the store procedure, you can go to sqldownload.com and click on download. There you will find SPU Pro Store procedure for various SQL Server versions and service packs. We have here SQL Server 2014 SP1. So I will click here, copy the stored procedure creation script to a management studio window, and let me create the stored procedure. Now I can execute SPO Pro. There you see session 53 is not waiting, session 54, 55, and 56 are waiting for page latch ex, exclusive latch to update this page. 
This is the page ID 287. You find this under weight resource. Database ID is 5, file ID is 1, and page ID is 287. So everyone is waiting to get the exclusive latch on that page while one session has that latch. Let's refresh this couple of times. There you see people are waiting to get the exclusive latch on this page to update. A session needs an exclusive latch on the page because only one person can update a page. While they update, they will have a page latch EX and nobody else can acquire page latch EX. So we have weights on this page for weight type page latch EX. Let's refresh it a couple of times. Looks like the workload is complete. You see the average time is 97 milliseconds. Now what we will do, we will go to workload 2. Workload 2, that's a select statement. The previous workload updated the first four rows, C1 equal to 1 by first thread, second thread 2, third thread 3, and the fourth thread 4. In workload 2, we are selecting from the same table, but we say SQL test underscore thread plus 10, which means the first thread, here also we have four threads, the first thread will select C1 equal to 11, the second one 12, the third one 13, and the fourth one 14. Here also we are executing for 120 seconds, and each select statement is executed for 1000 times in a loop. Now we are going to execute workload 1 and workload 2 together. To do that, we type in 1, 2 in the start custom and we click on start custom. There you see the average response time has increased from 99 to 138 and 126. Let's go to management studio and let's take a look. There you see everybody more or less is waiting for this page for page latch EX. There you see there is quite a lot of weight. So we have page latch contention on this page. We this time have EX and SH latch. The people who are selecting will wait for a SH page latch and the people who are updating will have EX page latch. Let's clear the wait stats and let's execute this statement to select from the wait stats for wait information on page latch EX and page latch SH. There you see quite a lot of wait time, 10 seconds within the amount of time we reset and we looked at it. Let's reset it again. Let's give it a few seconds. Let's look at it. Already we have people waiting for seven seconds to get this latch. To find out which table has the most page latches, you can execute this statement on operational stats. There you see tab 72 has page latch weights and the total wait time is about 766 seconds. Quite a lot of weights. How do you solve this problem? The way to solve this problem is we have to widen the rows so not everybody wants to update rows on the same page. One way to do that is we expand the rows by introducing a dummy column called C4 with character 4500, 4500. The page is 8 kilobyte in SQL Server. By introducing this column, we are pretty much expanding so a row will fit in a page. Two rows will not fit in a page. So let's go to the SQL test tool. The workload already completed. You see the average time more than 100. Now let's recreate the table. Let's widen the rows. Now let's go back and start custom. We are starting workload 1 and 2. You see the Average response time is no more 100, it's 23 and 37. Let's go and look at the weights. Let's execute the SPU Pro. You see, there are no weights. We don't have page latch weights related to updates. 
Let's reset the weight stats and look at the weight information. You see hardly any weights, 206 milliseconds. Let's reset the weight stats, wait for a few seconds, and let's execute the query. Again, you don't see many page latch weights. And let's look at which table has a lot of page latch weights. It's no more hundreds of seconds. Altogether, we have three seconds of page latch weights. Let's cancel this query and let's make a summary. In SQL Server, concurrent writes or read writes to the same page can lead to page latch weights or page latch contention. One common use case where I find page latch weights during an update is when a customer stores invoice numbers in a table. In many countries, for various reasons, invoice numbers have to be sequential with no gaps. A company might have 10 product lines with different invoicing number sequences for each product line. If the row is narrow, that is small, then many rows can fit in the same 8 kilobyte page. This can lead to many invoicing number sequences being stored on the same page. When different invoicing number sequences are accessed from concurrent sessions, this can lead to page latch weights. The way to solve them is to widen the rows so each row take about the page and we don't have contention on the same page. Thanks for watching the video. Send your comments and suggestions to me by email. Bye.